Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Don't forget to like and subscribe to join mine and Moon's journey. In this video, I'm going to show you how to tack up a horse that has to wear a gel pad. So one like this, the um, kind of sticky one, um, because it can be quite tricky. You've got to make sure that you do it in a way that they still have wither clearance and that it's in the right position because otherwise it does this and it pulls down the numner on top and when you get on it puts a lot of pressure on the wither which you don't want so let's get into it first thing I do is I put her breastplate on. She also has a martingale attachment but I clip that onto her bridle so I'll show you that after and I added these clips here so to make it easier to attach to the saddle. But I just pop this over the off. Then I grab her saddle pad. This is a GP. And I just put that on, bring it forward and then drag it back a little bit so the hair sits it back. Make sure you've got enough so you can pinch this here. I'll be doing it in the edit. Then I grab her gel pad. Mine has actually broken. Look at that. And it's gone all weird in the video at this point. Anyway, so you pop this on, you make sure it is all in the middle. Just like that. And then once again, pull this up to make sure that you've got a little triangle here that you can squidge on both the gel pad and the saddle pad. Next thing to do is get the saddle pad. So this bit here is the most important part. What I like to do is put the back of the saddle down first and then lift the saddle pad up to meet the front of the saddle. So I will show you that. It's a lot easier if you've got a stool or you can actually put it over the top of the So I pop up. So I put it like this. I put the bum down, as you can see. I hold the top, I grab the saddle pad with the gel pad and I bring that up to meet the saddle like that. And then it's set it pretty well. So now you can move the whole saddle pad because this is where it needs to be and so it is you get the gel pad. So if you want it a bit further forward or a bit further back, it's not going to make a difference now because the saddle is attached to the gel pad. Just like that. So you can see here she's got a lot of clearance there between her rivers and the patch I will be doing closer. Then the next thing I do would be to do the girth. She has this girth. It's just got um, stretchy on one side and not on the other. I put the stretchy side on the left side because that's my bad hand so it's easier for me to do up when I'm on. So this side would be the non-stretchy side. And this is also where I normally kind of jiggle the saddle about and make sure I where I want it. But I'll try and step that side so I can see what I'm doing. So I normally let's put the girth on and then I can see if it's hanging where I want it or where I'm not. And I use the first and the third strap. Now I'm not quite happy with where it's sitting, so I'm just going to move the saddle forward slightly. I'm 
only slightly and then now I'm happy with where it's sitting so I'm going to do it up on the other side and I'm making sure to put the yeah, bit through where the skirt goes on the bridesmaid. So this will just go through there like that. I then like to make sure that these are over the like of that and then I will pop the attachment on so you can do it either through one of your girth straps or you can do it on the D-ring. I prefer it on the D-ring but because it's correct to do it on a GT this way I will do it this way for the video. And then I don't put attach this to her saddle yet because where she's eating I don't want her to have like free movement. But as soon as I put the bridle on, then I attached that and then her boots on to lift her bridle on. So the notch, I'm happy to buy. What's wrong? No one's got for what? So the first thing I do is pop the reins over her head. And then as I said before, her martingale attachment has a little clip. That I just clip on to the top of her breastplate. So I do that. And then she's normally a snaffle, but she's in the gag for when we hack with others because she can um, be quite strong. And that's her head between her legs and it's off. So we're still trying to get her out of that. And then once we have her out of that, she'll be back in our snaffle for her people. You're happy. Okay. My poor body. This is a horse that used to be head shy. You could touch her head. Isn't it amazing? Right, so she's really good and she takes the bit herself. So all I do is hold it here. She opens her mouth, as you can see, and goes right in. But if you've got a horse that doesn't do that, I will put this on and then I'll take it back off and I'll show you what you need to do. So I will pop this back off before you need to get the horse So again, you just stick your finger there. They open their mouth, you slide the bit in, you go. She's probably thinking, what the hell are you doing? So then what you want to do is to come stand in front of them, make sure that these are tucked in, mind her eye, are tucked in, you don't want them on the outside. You can tuck them in, make sure that it is straight, make sure you get the four lock out so there's no pressure points, and then you do it up here. And you want you don't want your you don't want your nose bag to be tight pretty much. So I have my nose band pretty loose, as you can see. And then the next thing you do up is the throat lash. And again, I have this done up looser than you probably should, but I really don't see the point of a throat lash. So that is how loose her throat lash is. So the next thing I'll do is I'll bring her forward and I'll clip her knees onto her saddle and show you that. So here are the clips and here is the D ring on her saddle. And all I do is put that on there and she is ready to go. So the next thing I'll do is I will put on her boots. She does wear boots because she has a slight splint in her left leg from before I got her. So I like to put boots on her just to protect her legs and I like the boots that are very breathable so my favorite are these equilibrium tri-zone boots these are the high impact boots so they've got a bit of a harder strike plate at the back but they're still just foam and you can actually see through them so they're really great especially if you go to like cross country or something because the water just runs off they do not get heavy and they're not heavy plus they do not make her legs sweat so they're the only boots I found that her legs don't sweat in them, which is great because you don't want your horse's leg to sweat. More likely to get an injury when the tendons are too hot. So I'm going to stick these on and I'll show you that now. So these are the boots, they are very nice. And what you do is you just slip them around. I like to have them a little bit higher, push them down until they kind of get to where they need to be. So it's like there. You can have them a little bit like that, but I prefer them here. 
And you just pull these over with the Velcro, like that. And then do the same for the bottom. And then I like to see if I can push them down anymore. And then I will unstrap and retie them. So there's one. What you want to do, you want to make sure that they're even at the front. So I'll show you a front view. And that is Moon all tacked up. So I hope you enjoyed and found this really helpful. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye guys. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll leave some extra videos for you on this side and this side and I'll leave the subscribe button up here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye guys.